In this video, we are going to work through parsing function literals and call expressions. First up for function literals, which looks something like this. A function literal is how we define a function. We first use the keyword func, then we define the parameters list of zero or more values, and then a function block that will execute when called. In the last video, we learned how to parse these statement blocks when working with if statements. The func keyword is also easy enough to parse. The somewhat tricky part of this is going to be parsing these function parameters of a variable length. These identifiers are comma separated and live between two parentheses. Because we will assign these function literals to identifiers, the function literals are going to be a type of expression node in our parse tree. So without further ado, open up your AST package and write the function literal node. We will store a token referencing the func keyword. We will then store the parameters as a list of identifiers. Lastly, we will keep track of the body inside of a statement block. Next, open up your parser package and let's write the method to parse the list of identifiers. First thing to do is create an empty list. Then we check to see if we have a function that takes no parameters. After this, we call get token to move past the parentheses and we parse our first identifier. Then we enter a for loop that will execute until we find the right side parents. We consume the comma and advance to the next ID. We parse another identifier. After the loop, we check to make sure that we have a right parens, and then we return the list of identifiers. After this, we will register the func token with a prefix function inside of our constructor. The next step is to write the parse function literal function. The first thing that we do is create a node using our current token. Then we check to make sure that we have a left parentheses, which marks the start of our parameter list. Then we parse the parameters with the function that we just created. Then consume the right parentheses and call parse statement block. After this, we return the expression. And with that, we can now parse function literals. And the last part of our parser is parsing function calls. Function calls take on various forms, but generally look like this. First, we see an identifier, in this case called add, followed by parentheses, then a comma separated list of expressions that we are passing to the function. We can also do the JavaScript thing where we write a function literal and then immediately call it. Either way, we start the function call process with an expression node. It just depends whether it is a literal like this or the more common form of a named identifier. This is then followed by a comma separated list of expressions. We can even pass other function literals as parameters. This is because the function literals that we just wrote are expression nodes. So open up your AST package and write the call expression type. We need to store an expression for an ID or just a literal, which we will call function, and a list of expression arguments. And at this point, we are used to registering a token in our parser with a function that will handle the parsing logic. In this case, there are no new tokens that are not already registered. Our identifier expression, like add, will be picked up automatically by the parse prefix expression. So what do we do? We add the left paren token to the infix function map, pointing to a parse call expression method. What happens is we will parse the identifier or function literal. We will arrive at the left paren, which sits in between the identifier expression and the argument list of expression. So we want to add it to the infix map. Because of this, we also want to add it to our token precedence map with a precedence of call, which is the highest. Because function calls take the highest precedence, it will parse all the argument expressions as part of its tree. Next up, we need to write the parse call expression method. This should be pretty easy to follow. What is a little bit harder is the parse call arguments that we are using here. That code will look like this. First, we create our args object. Then we make sure that we aren't going to try and parse a function with no arguments. So if we reach a right parens, we just return an empty array. Then we advance our parser and add the first expression parsed to our arguments list. Next, we start a while loop and we loop until we know there are no parameters left, which are all preceded by a comma. Then we advance our parser twice to consume the comma and we call parse expression and append it to our list of arguments. Lastly, we expect to see a right parentheses as our next token. Otherwise, we return nil, and then we return our shiny new arguments list. And with that, our parser is complete. Unless it isn't, I'm sure somebody will let me know.
Now it is just time to get to the fun part, which is creating a class that will actually evaluate our code. See you there.